Hey, everybody. Hello. There we go. All right. Hey, this is Math Precalculus 10. Um, it is math in the second semester, and we are doing polynomials again for two reasons. One, because in Math 2030 business, and I don't know, wherever you end up, you're probably going to have to deal with formulas and maybe occasionally just polynomials in general. So it's good to know these really well. And in first semester in math level three, we only did some. We didn't quite go as far as you need by the end of grade 10. So part of this polynomials is going to be review. And occasionally there's going to be new bits that pop in every once in a while. So here we go. All right. So we're starting off at the very basics. You need to understand how this stuff works. Because I think if you understand how it works, the rules make sense because otherwise you're just memorizing rules and it's there's so many it's really easy to get them wrong so we're starting with expansion and you've seen this before all right so x to the third this thing actually before we start when we're talking about exponents we call this come on like door the explorer yelling at the, yelling at the video this is the base, and the little number on top is the exponent. And the base tells us what to write, actually, what to multiply. And so I'm going to write an x. And the exponent tells us how many times. To multiply the base. So x times x times x. So x is my base, that's what I need to write. Exponent of 3 means I write it 3 times for multiplication. Ta-da! So you can, brackets are often used in math to, to represent multiplication. So if I want to do this one, um, a dot also means multiplication. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. I don't know why I use such big numbers. Because if you can do little numbers, you can do big numbers. Anyway, there you go. Yes, I could have written it with brackets. Doesn't matter. Um, don't use, excuse me, the multiplication symbol. Because especially when there's x's, it just gets too weird. I don't know which is an x and which is the multiply symbol. It's too hard to figure out. There we go. This should not be difficult. It should be boring, in fact. Okay. So number two, what are the rules for multiplying polynomials? Okay. Um, first of all, monomials. The difference, okay, so a polynomial is just like all of this stuff together. Just a generic word for, you've got some letters, you've got some exponents, you've got some coefficients and big numbers up front. Monomial is one term, and that's really what I'm concerned about. So I'm going to use this one from down here as an example. 7x to the fourth and 6x2. So for coefficients, quick review, those are the numbers up front. We're going to multiply. The coefficients behave. If it's a multiplication question, we multiply the coefficients. If it's a division question, we divide the coefficients. If it's an addition question, we add them. They behave. It's the everything else that those are pesky exponents. They don't actually help. Well, they have their own set of rules. Let's put it that way. So 7 times 6 is 42. Now, the exponents. 
I will demonstrate this once and then I'm done with it. This means x times x times x times x, x to the fourth, so there's four x's. And then we're gonna multiply it by two more. And if we count those up, boom, it is x to the six. So we add our exponents. And I didn't do this when I taught this in class, or actually when I did it, it was online. Add exponents um, of the same variable. Okay, I'll do one right, um, I'll make one up. But never mind, sorry. I will point it out when we get there. And our variables, and this is key, they don't have to match. So what do I mean? I can go 3x times 2b, and I get 6bx. Done. Nothing more complicated than that. Hold on a sec. Sorry, I'm cold. I need to put my coat on. Another coat on. My big furry cookie monster coat. Okay. There we go. Three times two is six. The reason I flipped the order is uh, what's the word I want to say? It's best practice the way mathematicians do it somewhere along the way somebody said you know what why don't we just put the letters in order when we're when we're writing the answer and everybody said yeah okay that seems like a really reasonable choice that way when you do the question and I do the question we get the same we'll get the same answer it's that one's not wrong but your answer key is going to say that it should go in alphabetical order. So best practice, go with this one. This one, I'll probably just put a little note and go alphabets, alphabets, alphabets. Okay, so that's it. We multiply our coefficients, add our exponents. Ta-da. Let's do this. All right, so this was 42 x6 is, I copied it from there. All right, so we're gonna do the next one. A times four is 32. I'm gonna do this. You don't need this. Excuse me. And then we got X to the six, little arrow, two plus four. That's where that stuff is coming from. Because I'm hoping, um, well, this is going to be my answer key or my solution key. So just a little extra. You don't need to do that. But it's just a reminder where this stuff is coming from. All right. So five, mm, sorry, question five. Seven. Mm, seven. You know what? There's an understood one there if you want. So then I can go seven times one is seven. And in fact, there's a little bitty understood one there too. So then we can go three plus one more is four. So that's a really common mistake that students will just kind of like, oh, I already got the X's covered. No, 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 no. There's an X, an extra one. Because this is one, two, three, and one more makes four. <laughs> All right, pause the video. I know you can do this, so pause the video, do the questions, come back. Every video I give you a lecture of, if you just sit there and watch me, it's really passive and it's not going to stick in here. You need to do some work because your brain possibly feels that way about polynomials. And I want you to feel that way and the only way to get from there to there is practice. And it feels icky.
Um, I think technically that's called the zone of proximal learning, which is a really fancy way of saying, this is the icky place. Practice, practice, practice. We'll get to you to this. And it will make it, I'm not looking for permanent. I'm looking for, sorry, I'm not looking for perfect. I'm looking for permanent. So this there. All right, I'm gonna trust that you pause the video there. Nine, three times three is nine. B, three plus three is six. So with three terms, we are straight multiplying. So I'm gonna do it two ways. I'm gonna do it the right way, and then I'm gonna do it the lazy way. If we follow our order of operations, which you may know as bed mass. Brackets, nope, no brackets to deal with. There's an exponent, but there's nothing to do with it. Um, we'll see in the power rules what that looks like. There's no division, so there's multiplication. So technically, we should multiply those two first. Three times five is 15, p squared. And then we bring this sucker down, seven p three. And then we go, we go lazy is what we do. 15 times seven, okay, 105. I don't trust myself. All right, yep, 105. So 15 times seven is 105. And we got two plus three is P5. Done. That's doing it absolutely perfect following the rules. Or you can go three times five. Mm -hmm. Three times five times seven is 105. And there's a one there and a one there. So one and another one and three is P to the fifth. Now, how come I got to cheat? Well, this is a single term, and a single term, and a single term, and you can just go boop, 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 done. You can't do that when there's some brackets in there where it's um, six X, times x plus five or something like that. You can't go six x times x times five. Nope. But if it's just one thing, one thing, one thing, we're good. So I'm gonna get rid of this because somebody's gonna look at my answer key and go, what was she doing? I don't need to. All right, number eight. So six times three is 18 before and if you remotely struggle with your exponents before you do an assignment, just go through and put like all the ones for your exponents, if that's the part that you're struggling with. Okay, and you can even put that out front. So one times eight is eight. X, I've got one plus two is three. And here I've got, oh, I'll put a one there. One times two is two x to the fourth plus two more is x to the sixth. Mm, hold on a sec. Yeah, okay. So these videos are gonna be a little bit weird. Um, they're just gonna break in odd spots, I guess is what I'm saying. It's fine. You just hit the playlist, it'll be perfect. I guess what I should say, stop the video again and try these yourself. All right, let's do it. Four times five is 20. Four plus three is B7. I'm sad I didn't throw any negatives in here for you. Oh, well. Three times five is 15. And six. Ten now. I've I always have to be careful with using these. They look the same to me. So I got three, u to the third times u. That's going to give me u4. And I got b3 times v2. It's going to give me b5. Please, when you write them, make your u's and v's different. 
I'll put a little tail on that cracker so it looks better. All right. Now this one, same as before, I can just go all the way through all at once because it's one term for a monomial times a monomial times a monomial. So eight times eight is 64. And then I've got u squared times u to the fourth. That's going to give me u to the sixth and times u to the fifth. So that's u six plus five more is u 11. And then by these, I've got b squared times v to the four, so that's v six and two more, and that's v eight. All right, that one's a little bit weird. It might have been easier just to do these two first, get an answer, and then multiply by that. But it's up to you, whatever works for you. All right, four times three is well. Now I notice the questions are tricky here. Um, I'm going to do an alphabetical order, which I'm supposed to. So I'm going to look at my x's first. I, x3 times x4 is x7. And then I've got y times y squared. So that's y cubed. And last one, 10 times 7 is 70, x6. All right, now. because I can, and it should have been in here. We should do something with assigned numbers. So minus three X times five X. So it's up to you. I would suggest you learn the rules for multiplication, which is plus times a plus or a minus times a minus gives you an answer that's a positive. So I think of this in terms of folding socks. Two blue socks or two purple socks, that's a pair, I'm gonna fold them up, it's all good. But if I have a purple sock and I can't remember what color, pink sock or a pink sock and purple sock, that's not a pair because I care about pairs. That's a bad thing I have to go looking for more because you know, I do socks when I'm watching TV. So matchy matchy is positive, not matchy matchy is negative. It has nothing to do with the size of the numbers. That's when you're adding and subtracting. Or if you're having not a grand day, you know what? It was pointed out that I can just go minus three times five, boom, minus 15. And if it's a bad day or you're stressed, that's just completely okay. This is going to be minus 15 x squared, and I ran out of room. Okay, that's all there is to it. Minus 2 a b times minus 4 uh, b d. Okay, a negative, <laughs> sorry, a negative times a negative is positive, or Minus two times minus four is eight. So I only have one A, so I'm going to bring it along. My B is here. There's two of them, so it's B squared. And then I only have a D. So that's what I meant in those original steps, that your variables don't have to match. It's fine. You could have 2A times 4B, and you just bring the letters along if they're not in both sets. Yeah, I think that's it. So not exactly sure how long this video is, but that's enough because the next section is going to deal with powers. So have a great day. Math is your friend.